Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. It's time for another thrilling installment of Bedtime Tales. Written by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. Mm. All right, what are we starting with? We're starting wherever the bookmark is. Okay, egg and spoon rice. Oh, I remember um, these. Me too. I never won one. Me either. Never spilled the egg, but I never won one. It was the school sports day, and Becky had entered the egg and spoon race. One, two, three, go, said the principal, and they were off. Three yards down the field, Becky stumbled on a loose stone. The egg wobbled, but didn't fall. Becky held her arm very, very steady. Six yards down the field, a dog ran out from the crowd. It snuffled round Becky's legs, but she walked on, and the egg stayed on the spoon. Nine yards further on, the laces on Becky's trainers came untied. But Becky went on, slowly and carefully. The finishing line came nearer and nearer. Suddenly, Becky had won the race. Well done, said the principal, handing her a prize. You didn't drop the egg once. Once? Didn't drop the egg once. Yeah, it's just it seems once implies that <laughs> you could drop the egg multiple times. Yeah. Also, from what I understand, a good technique for this kind of race is to actually look at the egg. Yes, that's actually how you carry a cup of liquid without spilling it. Because if you're looking at the liquid, you're not going to spill it. But if you look away, congrats, you're going to have coffee all over your hands. Also, the art is nice again, though. Who's Becky? It can't be the girl in front, because she's dropped her egg. There's a boy in the back who's also dropped his egg. There's the stray dog, and then there's someone in the middle, which may be Becky, because at that age, it's kind of, like, neutral. But the haircut isn't particularly feminine, but the person in the middle is the only one who has an egg on a spoon. So either Becky is not in the shot, or Becky's in the middle. And I bet you that's the trophy down in the corner there. Yeah. Well, they didn't tell us what the prize was. They just said there was a prize. And it looks like an egg cup. How appropriate. Yeah. Lilliputians. Oh, we're back to Aesop's fables. Mmm. The dog and his shadow. A dog was walking along by a lake with a piece of meat in his mouth. Suddenly, he looked down and saw, reflected in the water, another dog, who was also carrying a piece of meat. What a bit of luck, thought the dog. If I can scare that fellow down there, then I can have two pieces of meat. So the dog barked fiercely, and immediately the piece of meat he was carrying dropped from his mouth and sank in the waters of the lake. However hard the dog tried, he could not retrieve it. Finally, the dog slunk away, feeling very foolish. For, as he had learned, if you try to take something that isn't really there, you may lose what you have already. Yep. I was thinking it was like more like, don't be greedy. Yeah. At least that's how I would read it. I would too, because unlike the fox and the crow, which was more don't be vain, but the same thing of opening your mouth and losing your food. Mm -hmm. But really, you don't recognize yourself in the water? Real, from what I understand, dogs, most dogs and most cats actually can't tell that their reflection is them. It's one, of the, it's one of the differences between humans and most other mammals, except for dolphins and elephants, and I think some chimpanzees can recognize themselves. All right. Well, I would have expected the moral to be don't be greedy, but because... You try to take something that isn't really there? C can we get some real-world examples of that? All right. The Lion and the Mouse Once, a lion was asleep when a mouse ran over his nose. The lion woke up immediately and would have killed the little creature. But the mouse squeaked with fear and pleaded for its life. The lion was a kind animal, despite his fierce appearance. So he set the mouse free. It ran off thankfully into the forest. Sometime later, the lion was out hunting when he found himself entangled in a hunter's net. 
He roared and struggled, but the net pulled tighter and tighter, and he knew he couldn't escape. Now the mouse heard the lion's roars, and he ran toward the animal who had once saved his life. Quickly, he set to work, nibbling at the net until the lion was able to escape. So you see, the lion's kindness brought its reward. Hmm. So, kind of funny, this actually reminds me of the beginning of Resident Evil 4. There's a wolf you can save that helps you defeat, defeat a boss later if you save the wolf. Hmm. Cool. And, yeah, very straightforward. Be nice. It pays off. Hmm. Especially when you're dealing with tech support. Oh, yeah. Because remember, it's not their fault your device is broken. And you are probably the 300th person they've had talking to them about the problem today and how it's all their fault. Mm -hmm. The last time I called, yeah, I was trying to, I'd gotten a replacement card and I had to call to activate it. And it put me through to a live person and I was like, I'm sorry, I don't know what went wrong. I was trying to navigate the automated menu and they went, oh, it's um, down, I can finish it for you. And I was like, okay, thank you. And... She's like, I'm really sorry about that. I'm like, don't be. I'm only one phone call. You're dealing with this all day. <laughs> I remember this one. Oh, kitties. Yes. The three kittens. There were once three naughty little kittens called Max, Emily, and Fred. Hmm. They all loved each other very much. And when Mother Cat warned them that they would each have to find a separate new home and would never see each other again, they were furious. That won't do at all, said Fred. We must never be parted. But what shall we do? Squeaked Emily, who was the smallest kitten. We must make a plan to make sure someone takes us all, said Max, who was black. Why do we have to point that out? I guess it's because of the art up here, because so far I'm not quite sure which one of those is Fred and which one of those is Emily. I'm guessing the bright yellow orange one is Emily. The very next day. Two children came to choose a kitten with their mother. I'd like that tabby one, said the little boy, pointing to Fred. Hmm, there we are. <laughs> no, no, that tiny orange one, said the little girl, picking up Emily. Well, I like that black one, said the mother. I know. Why don't we come back when we have made up our minds? While they were away, the kittens put their plan into action. They curled themselves up into a big ball of tabby, orange, and black fur. You couldn't tell where one kitten began and the other ended. You just told us they were three different colors. I'm pretty sure I can tell. <laughs> when the mother came back, she didn't have the heart to separate them. So she scooped up the sleeping ball of kittens and popped them all into the cat basket. Emily, Fred, and Max yawned and stretched. Their trick had worked, and they were all off to a new life together. Mm. Okay, I've always been partial to Fred's. I don't know why. They're all very cute, though it's kind of interesting that those two have their mouths open. They all have their mouths open. Mm, yeah, that is the mouth. I thought maybe they like a little mark on the chin. Some nope. cats have those. And they're playing with a ball of string. Because why not? Hmm. Didn't we have a story like this in the other book of short stories? That's kind of what I was thinking. Playing mailman. Jeremy's parents had given him a mailman's outfit for his birthday. It was very smart with a blue peaked cap and a canvas post bag. The only trouble was, he didn't have any mail to deliver. Why don't you deliver my yard sale announcements? Asked Mom. Only down this street, though. I don't want you to cross the road. So Jeremy put the announcements into his canvas mail bag and set out. He delivered an announcement to every house in the street. At number six, he was given a glass of milk and a chocolate cookie. But at number 23, he was chased down the garden path by a shaggy brown dog. Phew, said Jeremy when he returned home. Now I really know what it's like to be a mailman. Especially with the dog thing. Yes. Though, I wonder if that's less common in certain parts where they actually have the mailbox on the, like, the outside of the property. I think it's less common with mailboxes that are on the street. It's more common when you have the mailboxes that are up by the door. And I think depending on where you live, there are regulations about where you're allowed to have a mailbox. So there may be some places where you can't have one that's by the front door that they have to be on the street. Mm. Or if you live in one of uh, the subdivisions that have one of those big sets of lock boxes. It's such a target for thieves because you just break off the back and then you get everybody's mail in one shot. Wow. 
Yeah, that's the problem with those ones, but regular mailboxes where anybody can open them aren't exactly a great idea either. But hey, that's a whole nother issue. Yep, and we have, going back to the story and the art, we have the mailman outfit at the top. By the looks of it, it was pulled out of, that's actually laying on top of the wrapping or paper that, you know, it came in. And there was actually the scene where he got the chocolate milk and the chocolate cookie. It didn't say it was chocolate milk, but it certainly looks like it in the drawing. Just as he was given a glass of milk and a chocolate cookie. Hmm. Yeah, she has some nice plants. Yes, that's a very pretty morning glory. She also has a very nice cat. I'm a little partial to tuxedos. Oh, wait. I think we have a connection here. <laughs> the previous story with the cats. The black cat looks like the black cat in the art of the next picture. So I think there's two other cats inside. Nope. His paw in this story is all black. This oh. cat has two white front paws. He's the mitten color. At least I call them mittens because they look like little mittens. The black kitten from the previous story has at least one black front paw. We can only see one front paw and one back paw, but we know one is black and all the paws shown on this cat are white. Mm. And now Grim. Mm. The author, not the TV series. Snow White. Mm. I think we've done this one before. Disney, I think this is going to be a little different than your version. Mm. Once upon a time... There was a beautiful girl called Snow White. Now Snow White had a stepmother who was also very beautiful, but she was wicked and vain. One day the stepmother looked into her magic mirror. It usually told her she was the most beautiful person in the world, but this time it said that Snow White was. The stepmother was furious and ordered a woodcutter to take Snow White into the forest and kill her. But the woodcutter couldn't bring himself to do this, and instead of killing her, he left her by a little cottage where she fell fast asleep. When she awoke, Snow White found seven dwarfs looking at her. It was their cottage, and they immediately took her in. Very soon, Snow White was looking after them all, and they loved her dearly. When the wicked stepmother next consulted her mirror, she learnt that Snow White was still alive. So she disguised herself as an old woman and went to the cottage with a basket of poisonous apples. Snow White ate one and fell senseless to the ground. The evil stepmother was convinced she'd killed the girl. The grieving dwarves thought Snow White was dead and put her in a glass coffin. On their way to the burial ground, they met a prince who asked to see the dead girl. Not creepy. Mm -hmm. The dwarves set down the coffin. The movement jolted the poison apple out of Snow White's mouth. She opened her eyes and immediately fell in love with the prince. He carried her off to his kingdom and they lived happily ever after. Yeah, I've heard some versions of the story where the apple is basically her choking and being jolted knocks the um, piece of apple loose. Yeah, I've heard that version too. And like in most shorter versions of the story, we skip straight to the apple. We skip the comb and the bodice laces. And there's all the seven dwarfs and Snow White. Mm -hmm. And these are definitely not the Disney dwarfs. No. Hmm. I remember doing this. I didn't, but I'm going here. We have another parallel with the other book. Hmm. Remember um, Mr. and Mrs. Gobbledygook? Hmm. Potato Prince. I think potatoes are boring, said Matthew. He had just helped Dad dig up some potatoes from the vegetable patch. Useful things, potatoes, said Dad. Boiled, fried, or mashed? Ugh, said Matthew. I hate mashed potatoes. Dude. Dude. Let me show you something interesting you can do with potatoes, said Dad. Matthew followed him into the kitchen. Dad cut a potato in half. Then he carved a daisy pattern on the cut side. He got a large sheet of white paper and mixed up some of Matthew's poster paints. He dipped the cut potato in the paint and pressed it onto the paper. A daisy pattern, said Matthew in delight. After that, he made some more potato prints. An owl, a railway engine, and a ship. Perhaps potatoes aren't so boring after all, said Matthew. Hmm. Yeah, I, I remember doing this in, like, kindergarten and stuff like that. Also, mashed potatoes. How could you not like mashed potatoes? I can understand other vegetables, but mashed potatoes. Butter. <laughs> you don't always have it with butter. Sometimes you have it with gravy. So it might not be the mashed potatoes that are the problem. It could be the gravy. Of course, I usually had mashed potatoes with um, butter and sour cream. Also chives. Very tasty. Ooh, bacon. 
if you didn't do all that, why did you mash it in the first place? That's everything you put on a baked potato. So? So it's time to wrap up this installment of <laughs> Bedtime Tales. <laughs> hmm. So this has been another installment of Bedtime Table, Bedtime Tables. Yes, we're, we're doing an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> Bedtime Tales. I think we're about two thirds of the way through now. Written by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. If you haven't picked this up yet, I'm sure we've still managed to find a link. Because if you haven't picked it up yet and nobody else bought the one we linked to the past 15 or 20 times, we can still use the same link. But if someone's bought it, we have to find a new link. Hmm. I hear Hyrule has some. Yeah, but usually only one a generation. Ah. Uh -huh. Also, Ebates. Because I can? They want to pay me $6 this quarter, and they'll give me an 8% bump up if I cash it out as a Kohl's gift card. Doesn't that sound like fun? And mentioning my Tumblr because that's where my non-Ebate hacks are, though there, my Ebates is there as well because it's Tumblr, and you know you just keep posting things. You know, kind of this running list of stuff. Like Harry's and Casper and... Marcus and apps and referral links and discounts and recipes and tips and tricks and oh you left I hope it was to go to my tumblr or my ebates <laughs> Amazon and ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's reading room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel thanks again for listening <laughs>